<clears throat> name? My name. The whole thing? Francisca Meneses Costaban. Cool. <laughs> so how did the idea of making a book about friendship came out? Um, God, I don't even remember the, the specific date because it's been so long, but I think it was 2015 and I thought to myself, it's super hard to make friends as an adult, especially when you move abroad so much. And I realized in my searching, in the search of finding a book about friendship, I realized there were no books about friendship for adults. And that's how the idea came up. Should I look at you or at the camera? I don't know where to... I don't know, whatever you want. I don't know. What's, what's less awkward? <laughs> Both? Just look at the camera and me, maybe? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Why do you think it's so hard to make friends as an adult? Because you don't have time. Uh, first and foremost, you don't have time. You're filled with responsibilities. You need to take care of your job, your house, cook, clean the place. Uh, if you have kids, then time is even more uh, a scarce resource. So that's the first thing. The second is that when, when you grow up, you're in environments that don't allow yourself to be vulnerable. And vulnerability is like a high, it's, it's, it's a very important part of how friendships are constituted. You need to be vulnerable with your friends and they need to be in vulnerable spaces with you. Uh, and if that doesn't happen, that it's it's really hard for any friendship to evolve. The only reason why you open up is because you trust this, this other person that is not going to harm you. And it's really hard to find an environment that you feel is not threatening and, and will not harm you in any way. So the more interactions you have with somebody and the more you experience that person or you see that person experiencing different realities, and perspectives and if you see that this person is not doing any harm or harmful things to you or is not being like violent towards you 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 can say okay I, I can actually open up and show a little bit of myself but as an adult we usually don't open up that much we have so we feel like we have so much to lose if we open up we might get hurt we might you know engage with somebody and then that person might not be interested in us and then we feel like like terrible it's 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 a really and we and as an adult you feel like you don't need to be vulnerable like you don't want to be vulnerable like vulnerability is for kids you know they might get hurt each other but you're fine you have to be like the backbone of the family or whatnot so it's yeah it's it's this weird equilibrium between trying to stay open and at the same time be ready to get hurt but expecting not to get hurt by this other person that you want to construct a friendship towards and why do you think there are no books about it? Oh, God. Because people are worrying about other stuff. And I get it. When you're an adult, you're, you're worrying about other stuff, like finding, finding your couple, finding someone to love, finding the perfect flat, finding the right job, looking for a job that you actually love and enjoy doing. Um, just like maybe buying even a house, like you're worrying about other stuff. So I, I get it. I get it. I get that it's something that you're not worrying constantly because you, there's so many things that we need to worry about these days, especially like politics and stuff that is going on in our countries, in our governments and stuff. So I, I, I get it. I get it's not something that is in our top of our minds. It's such a curious phenomenon that there's so many books for kids and for teenagers about how to keep friends and how to apologize and how to make friends and how to i don't know like say sorry and i don't know but when you're an adult those books stop we as adults still have problems with friends and crisis with them we still fight it's so weird that there's almost, almost, because I'm sure there is, but there's almost no books about friendships for adults. So you were writing it and the, the process of writing it was collaborative in the sense that we were talking all the time about what we wanted, what, what we want the book to be. And you were writing the dialogue, but we were also reading 
papers and investigations and research about friendship? We came about a few problems. Sort of, for example, the first problem that we encounter is that the papers that you need to read in order to uh, come about a, 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 you know, a full body of investigation and research. So there was a, there was a period of uh, asking friends trying to get our hands into some of those papers. Uh, and then once we got them, we, we, I had to read them, you, you read them too. Um, so there was this, this time in which I was reading uh, research about friendships and, and, and how do friendships evolve and how do they, uh, how do they come about, how they, how they get created. Um, but then after, after reading, there was the problem of now that I read, I need to write something and, I, and it needs to be engaging and it needs to be fun and it needs to be blah, blah. What I usually do is that I write a whole play or a whole book or a whole whatever I need to write and then I contaminate backwards. So I find something at the end and then I put it back in the first scene or the, or the beginning. So it feels more like a closed environment or, or self-referencing environment. Um, and that was not really a possibility to do here because while I was writing the second episode, like you started outlining the drawings for the first episode. So um, the whole time I, I needed to be thinking ahead and to have to leave enough open spaces and to have an absolute certainty that I will be able to fulfill those uh, open spaces and, and give them proper closure uh, in the end. So I was, it, it, was, it was a really intense exercise of attention while writing. The process of, the, of drawing the book was very intense because I had to face a lot of those uh, difficulties. I also had to face things that I'm not used to drawing, like multiple characters in one page and face, facial expressions and scenery and portraits of actual living people like scientists and psychologists. It's funny because I see it as a progress. I saw, I see the whole thing and I'm happy, but while you're doing the book, you suffer. You suffer every day sitting on a desk, writing, and I'm sure that you had the same experience, but when you put your soul and yourself into something like a long project, like a long-term project, you are not having a great time while doing it. You, you try to focus on the result and try to do the best you can during the process. But most of the times um, I wasn't having a great time because I was fighting my own demons, fighting my own insecurities and my, um, like the crisis I was going through. I chose traditional tools because I wanted to reproduce the texture that you see on my Instagram. Um, for this past couple of months, I have become really, I don't know why, but there's something very attractive about traditional tools like markers and pencils and the texture some pens they can give to hair and clothing. and. Most of the people, I don't know why, but they associate my style to what you see on Instagram, but you see with traditional materials. The past couple of books that I've done, they have been done with Photoshop. And even though I'm a, I'm a huge fan of digital illustration, I feel like I really wanted to take the chance to do a traditional painted book. And I feel like the textures that we accomplished on the book, they're so rich. And uh, a lot of people ask why we kept, <laughs> why we keep doing black and white books. And that's actually a really good question. Um, it's mainly because of an economic, um, financial uh, reason, because we want people to actually be able to purchase the book. Because if we do a full color book, there are a lot of people that won't be able to pay it. And we want more people to be able to pay it and enjoy the book, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so when, I, when the people from the publisher told me that this book needs to be in black and white, I realized that a fun and more interesting and richer way to do a black and white book 
it would be with markers and pens because it gives some richness that the digital tools, even though you can't imitate them, it's much easier and interesting with traditional tools. And that's why I use traditional tools. I feel like I, I, I picked the worst day for <laughs> filming this because my hair is super greasy and my face is full of spots, but I know you guys don't mind and you don't care about that, so it's okay. I wanted to film this video with Ed because uh, we wanted to celebrate that the book, the friendship book, it's finally for sale in Chile and we wanted to celebrate because it's amazing that the book is finally out. I can't wait for you guys to see the book. I'm so happy. So this is the thing, guys. The book is right now for sale in Chile. This is very important. Only in Chile right now because they are trying to see how well the book goes, how well, how well the, the book uh, does in Chile first, and then they're going to try to sell it uh, throughout Lat um, in Latin America. But for now, it's only for sale in Chile unless you buy it online. I'm going to leave a link down below in case that link is working. I don't know if there's any online stock for shipping internationally, but I'm still going to leave the link just in case. And for the English version, Ed is actually working on the English translation right now. So fingers crossed, we'll have the English version of this book soon, like on a couple of months. So for now, the book is only for sale in Spanish in Chile, but very, very soon it's going to be for sale the English version on my shop, on my online shop, and I'm going to ship internationally. So as soon as that happens, guys, which I'm working really hard to make it as soon as possible, I'm going to let you know. But thank you so much for all the waiting and for being so patient and nice to me. I really wanted to share all of the drawings and how I made the book because you guys, if there's someone in this world who knows how much this book means to me, is you guys because you were part of the process and you saw my face full of spots just like today in January and February when I was working on this book. So you made me company all of those months and I just, I feel you guys are so part of the process as, as well as I am. And I wanted to share this like, the, the end part. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much, Ed, for interviewing me on my video. <laughs> that was weird, but I hope you like, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you all so much to my patrons because they guys were the ones who allowed me to pay for the Copic markers to paint this book. Can you actually believe it? All of these Copic markers and refills that I use, so they were the ones allowing me to make a, like a, illustrate a book with my own hands, like with traditional tools. So thank you so much, patrons. And yeah, I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will see you next week. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs>